All right, we got a no cooling call. I think we're gonna do a maintenance and a service. So let's we'll see. Yeah, could this get the filter? How often do you change, change the filter? I just changed it. Okay. So here's the thermostat. Okay. And it's 89. So you turned this off? Yeah, I turned it off. I was okay. Like, I couldn't run it. Okay, right. Okay. That's good. And, and, and the yeah. attic is right here. Okay, then while well, I start up here and work my way down. Okay. All right. Is, All right. is the gate open so I can get to the outside unit? Yeah, it's outside the mm -hmm. door. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Got a good one here. So I hear the blower and I hear refrigerant. Oh yeah, that's when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> I hear refrigerant circulating. Know how I get in there? What's going on, bro? So I'm gonna do a maintenance on this unit. Watch out the coil. Check this capacitor real quick, see what we got. That's pretty much what I do on all my warning calls though. Some people go for a maintenance, but a lot, a lot of people don't keep their unit maintained. So uh, I sell a maintenance for, uh, I think I did this for 95, but, but it's not cleaning a blower motor or anything like that. I may offer it. Sometimes I offer it depending on depending on the access. So make sure we don't have any voltage. That's look kind of new. Alright, so I don't have any voltage. Yeah, this capacitor. Should have got my tube back. That's okay. So we, I'm gonna take that one off. Should have a 7.5 on the cap.
check Michael Fair. So I got 7.4 on the cap, so it's gonna be a bad fan motor. All right. So make sure all the leads connected good and stuff. Let's go in here. All right, so let me see what kind of fan motor this is. I'm sure I got one on the truck. And we'll swap it out, so. I'm gonna clean this coil, so what I'm gonna do is, since I gotta change the fan motor, I'm gonna take this whole top off and uh, watch the coil change that motor up. Yep. All right, so I just turned that thermostat off. So I won't blow no fuse or anything like that. Let's see. Go ahead and take this top off. Yes, I already got about four cars. Four cars I got to run today. Today Saturday. Like we busy. Thought it supposed to been a little tropical storm out there. Bring some rain, but no like not gonna happen. So, so remember taking these goodness out. Gotta be very careful on not to cut your hand on that little metal piece. So I already discharged the capacitor. She told me a couple, she had a company come out. I uh, wanted to come, had a company come out a couple weeks ago. And they changed the capacitor. But you know, sometimes with these uh, blower motors, a couple days later, that fan do go out. I got this hollow 1132, works pretty good. I'm thinking about getting in a little shade. It shouldn't be too long though. So I use that hollow 1132, a 1132nd, fit perfect for these blower motor change out, I mean fan motor, condenser. I didn't even check. I ain't checked the size of the motor. I lost one screw. Gotta make sure I got that motor. I'm sure I do. So I got about eight motors that I bought in my, but it's in my other truck. I 
had stocked up last week and never took it out the back seat. Next thing I'm gonna do is give me a socket for my drill with 1132 hollow. I'll take the magnet out. Next call, I got a leaking ceiling. My husband went up there and I think the drain line stopped up. So they turned the unit off. So normally with the warranty calls, I do it. <clears throat> Cause early in the morning, it seems like on Saturday, the warranty, the warranty uh, uh, companies have put a bunch of calls out where people don't call either Friday night or, and they skip and they uh, put them on my board for, uh, and I get them in the morning. So I, but we had like five days to schedule the car. So I usually charge the, the one to come with extra if they want me to come out on the weekend. So I add that to the service fee. No. Cut at least one of these off. Alright. That's about so I say one. I make sure I got this motor here. Yeah, the bad boy locked up, is it? Yeah, it's hard to turn. So this is a one third. Of course, this is generic motor, so they got one third, 825 RPM. Let's see if I It's gonna come off like butter. Yeah. Right. Get that out of the way. And go to the scrap pile. Get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. I'm 
Pull that plug out. I'm sorry, that's the wrong plug in. That thing's gonna be facing down. You pull this plug out here. Insert that one back right there. Good to go. one I don't think it, it, it don't need it but put it back like they had it I dig around a little bit try to find it before I leave Cup of spade on that white and that black one. Should have turned this uh wires this way, but hopefully it's long enough to reach. Yeah, that ain't well. Might go like that. Right, that's true. 
if we could right there. All right, let's see what we can do with this. Put my little snub right there, I guess. Let's see what we can do with that. It's an old piece of PVC. Yeah, we're gonna see if we can get this good one running for another 20 years. I think it's actually 16 years old. 2004. The spades that make sure that's out the rain. Yeah. All right, so, so I'm gonna do a little housekeeping and clean all this junk up and uh Clean that condenser cord. More than one way to uh, skin a cat. All the technicians, business owner, we got different ways of doing different things. All, I think all of us got our peg fees. A lot of people don't like to use uh, leak sealant. I use it. Uh, a lot of people say you gotta wash the condenser cord. You know, with condenser cleaning. I don't like condenser cleaner. Uh, any kind of cleaner. Not saying I won't ever use it. But I just like wash mine with water. You know, that's just a pet peeve of mine. I just feel if I get every inch of that coil and knock the debris through, you know, that's the goal. I'm, it means the goal is not trying to get these things back shiny. It's just to want the condenser to breathe. In extreme cases, it may be good to use, uh, you know, some some kind of cleaner that won't erode the coil. But uh, like I said, I look like to use spray water. And just get air into that coil. I know that cleaner; it may work. A lot of guys, you know, some companies charge such and such for maintenance. Let's say uh, sixty-five dollars to do a maintenance. Then the technician trying to rush, and they put that condenser coil on, on good. If you don't wash all that condenser cleaning cleaner off, every inch of it, because you got to get every inch of the coil anyway. If you don't get every inch of that condenser 
cleaner off the joint road they call. That's what I see a lot of time. Especially if you don't take the top off. I see a lot of time uh it's hard to get up under there. If, if you can see, uh, not on this one, but uh, a lot of coal would be eroded at the top around there. Because you can't get in there. That's how I know if somebody didn't take the top off and clean it. You know. Like units like this. Some units you can get to on the outside real good. You see that water going straight through there? That's all I want. That's how I know it can breathe. If I was doing this and I see that water wasn't going through there, I know we stopped up, got a problem. Some call special commercial you know, the core be doubled up. Really not good to put condenser cleaner on that, I don't think. Because you can't split it. And all that condenser cleaner just stays between the both of the core. I've been watching this for about 15 minutes, so. Should be good to go like a sand blade or something hit that at one time. So yeah, if anybody out there running warranty calls, because people say you can't make no money on warranty. Most warranty don't cover maintenance. And we all know, unless the customer has a service agreement with a uh, AC contractor, and if you got a warranty company, you won't be getting that customer. So a lot of customers don't worry about maintenance. They just call the warranty company when it breaks down. But if you explain to them that uh, it's a good chance that they'll get denied, they'll go ahead and let you do the warrant. So you usually get an extra hundred dollars on top of your service fee. So before I leave here, I'm gonna get 200 in my pocket. Well, almost 200. in my pocket, and then I get to build a warning company for the motor. Try to get, get the average ticket sale up. Like I say, you run three, four warning calls a day, and you do that, you do the math, you know, every service call take about an hour with a maintenance. That's $600 in your pocket. Then you're gonna get, you know, every day. Then you're gonna get a check for the warning company. So I'm paying seven days. One I'm paying about 30 days. Most of them pay between seven to 10. All right, so we got that, that looking good. I'll just check the connections here. Make sure everything good and tight. Let 
Yeah. Um. Yeah, they're gonna approve. Okay. Yeah. I, I called it in. I just went on ahead and I mean you, you need one, so I went on started on it anyway. But we gotta do everything by computer nowadays. Oh. So I gotta wait for a response. But they're they gonna take care of you. Okay. Yeah. They should. Yeah. I paid them up front. <laughs> right. I heard that. Yeah, they gonna take care of you, we gonna take care of you. But I got it good and clean for you, so Okay. Then I'm Did they need any free on? I haven't checked it yet. Oh, well, yeah, okay. once I get it running, put the fan blade and all that good stuff back on there. Uh-huh. I'll, uh, I'll was, check out a refrigerant press. Okay, because that's what was the, one of the problems, too, that we was having, that it wasn't getting cold enough. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'll definitely look look look, look into that, too. Okay. See if I need to add anything. Thank you. All right. You want a waffle? No, ma'am. I'm good. I ate before I left. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, though. Yeah. Yeah, so they, like I tell her, they want to come pretty good about approving people, so a lot of times just go ahead and do it. Sometimes I call my work orders in money. I have got business sometimes, but I'm not gonna do no real crazy expensive job. You know, being in minor installation like a fan motor, somebody just go ahead and knock it out real quick. But of course it's like a vibrator coil compressor. Oh wait. Now some warranty companies I would not do anything without getting approval. Alright, so I'm gonna stick this through here. Yeah, some warranty companies is just terrible scams. But you got some that Take the contractor word for it. <clears throat> yeah, you gotta be careful with these fingers on Goodman, man. So this black and white wire, we're gonna do away with this one. We're gonna do away with this one. We're gonna put the brown back on that fan right there. All right. So these things have a little crease up in there. I always like to put the crease on the smooth part so it'll fold down evenly. I make sure my wire is good and crimped. One of the little fundamentals I was taught early on. Stuff like that can come back and haunt you if you wire slip off. So I'm gonna put this one back on the black. I think it was right on here on this black. Alright, so they're gonna go right there. I'm gonna put that white on there. Alright. And 
this one here, I'm just gonna put a piece of what's called back on there. Parts be twisted the other way. So if your tape unravel, which we ain't really worried about on this application, it, it won't spin your wire nut back off. white wire you know white common so it needs to be on that C on your capacitor so it has swap those around so like I said it's for entertaining purposes only though there's not how-to videos of how to install a fan motor or a capacitor so but uh this white wire is common this brown and white wire is a, is a common too they usually go to a, a, a run capacitor, but uh, that brown wire go to fan. But yeah, just make sure whatever you can call that contactor, but make sure these two, that white wire coming from your fan, on the same thing. So I'm gonna wait till the unit turn on and. All the pressures. Guess I can do some paperwork until then. Well, I use, I use QuickBooks, so I do everything on the app. Go over there one day how I use my QuickBooks. It's sweet. Cause I got everything that I'm gonna do on the inspection already pre-written. And I have a diagnostic fee already programmed. I have a deductible already programmed. You know, if I'm doing flat rate condenser fan motors or compressors, that's what a unit have all that pre-programmed. this up but then uh i'm gonna let it run for a little while though let the system stabilize so before i add in the fission i'm about to get approval for that we might be all right all right that's another good man right there that's another good man right there w working It's a workhorse. Shout out to the good man out there.